make sure that the volume is good. Yes. Ah, it's a little bit of showers. But it doesn't bother us. Come on in, brothers and sisters. Blessed day, everyone. And blessed day. I greet all of you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I greet all of you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. I pray that you are all well and that God has been faithful to each and every one of you in your homes, with your families. May God bless all of you this day. Me, I am blessed. I thank God for this day. For his grace, his mercy, his goodness, and his kindness. I beg, Sister Cheryl, the Lord has just reminded me of something that I have to share, which is important, not just to us Christians, not just to born again believers like in the church, the, not the, the members, but the church leaders. This is mostly for the church leaders in the Pentecostal church. I greet all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God of Nazareth. I pray that all of you are well. My brothers and sisters, the Lord has asked me to ask the leaders, every leader in church, you are a leader, you have a ministry and you have been called. God is asking you this question. Who says that we, the children of God, are different from the people in the church? I want to put it like that so that you can hear me because I hope you can hear me still. Leaders, God is asking, who says that we have special treatment? Huh? Who taught us that we are superior from the church members? This morning, the father, Sister Sharon, is making me understand something. There is a very bad attitude and habit in the church, in all the churches in the world. We sit where we want to sit. The leaders sit on special seats. The church members sit on normal seats. The leaders come in church later on when the praise team and the worship team have already started to praise and worship. The leaders show up. Somebody guides them inside the church. They go and sit down like they are presidents and ministers. God is telling me to ask all of you leaders that have this habit where they are calling you mama and papa. What does the Bible say? We, the servants of God, are supposed to be the most humble of the bunch. Where does this attitude come from? Of where people have to carry handbags for you? Of where people have to carry things for you? Of where people have to, 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 to protect you like you are special and superior? Because when I go somewhere to save, the Lord has taught me, even with Eben when I went, he told me you are not going as a servant of God who needs to be treated special. You humble yourself. If you are a woman, I want to ask women leaders, you are a woman, you are a leader. Fellow women are carrying your handbag. They are serving you like a God. They are kneeling and bowing down to you like you are Jesus himself. Fellow women, I was so disgusted to see my young generation. If me, an apostle, can humble myself and enter into somebody's kitchen and go and help them to cook and clean dishes and prepare what they are preparing, how special are you? How special are you? Gospel artist, where did the Lord say that we are celebrities? Excuse me, my brothers and sisters. Saving requires humility and truth. When did we become special? You know God, God is really great. His wisdom is really amazing. Where I came from, I was, I was serving food to, chew, to, to, to younger boys and girls who are my younger brothers and sisters in Christ. I was busy there as an apostle of the Lord, helping out my sister in the kitchen to cook and clean up. Then they were in the living room, being saved, eating, sitting with a very bad belly and behavior. Coming in that place, they're calling you artists. People leading you to your stool where you sit. You have special chairs with special cushion and special colors. Pastors, worshippers, leaders. Which Bible scripture says that thou shalt be treated extraordinary and thou shalt be bowed down for? I was disgusted. Because the God I serve is king. Every time he's telling me it's about humility, it's about truth. 
which God are you, some of you, saving? The one that is busy a, 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 a promoting this pro propaganda that you have brought out. I would like to know, I would like to understand. It don't even make sense. Unbelievable and disgusting that men are saving fellow men like God. Me, I do not expect people to treat me special. If we are all going to save God, then everybody is putting their best foot, mind, body, soul, and spirit, all their strength, everything in them, to save God in spirit and in truth. Not to have slaves, not to have laborers, worshippers and praise team, choirs. That's why you are terrible. You cannot even worship with the Holy Spirit. You nasty when you are singing. I'm in church. It pisses me off because you cannot even praise and worship. But you are all dressed with makeup and wearing the same outfit like majorines. Like little girls that had a party. Do you want to show up to my tea party? Oh, I'll show up. Can you wear pink? Oh, yes, I wear pink. That's why you can't have Holy Spirit. Fools. Fools. And the pastors that think that they are somebody. God put you there before anybody could recognize the anointing in you. God recognized it. He says, be humble. Go and say, look at you. A bunch of manipulators. A bunch of power carriers. A bunch of people a people suckers. And people want to destroy. And make them worship them and not God. My question comes back again. The Lord says I should ask. Where did it say that you people deserve any extra anything? Most of you pastors are living above your means. The lifestyle you portray is not accurate to the life that you live or even the bank accounts that you have. People are saving you, but the same people are the ones that you are collecting money from. What's wrong with you, my generation? What's wrong? What kind of behavior is that? Is that what God said? Is it what our God is about? There is so much to Jesus Christ than this lie that you have put out. There is so much to God than this manipulation that you have put out. So for me as an apostle who is serving God in spirit and in truth and I'm not pleasing myself, it's a difficult generation to serve God with. Because when you come humble, they think you are a fool. They don't understand this, the spiritual things we are supposed to be humble. They want you to make them a, a save you, suck up to you, suck up to you, a, 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 a pray to you. For me, it's difficult as a daughter of God to save in this generation. Because people don't believe that it's just genuine and it's true. I said, let's go and save God. They believe they have to kneel down, bow down to me, save me. Save me or are you saving God? I want to ask. Who said that the people who lead the church are special? Who says they're important like that? Who says they should have security guards? I'm an apostle who goes to nation after nation, continent after continent, by the will and the grace of God, with no security guard. I even take my children. So tell me about who said you're supposed to have all of these fleshy desires. The church is so partiality and unfair. It is injustice to the name of God. Some people do not stand a chance because they are not in the praise team, because they are not doing the same sucker business like others do for the past. What kind of nonsense is this, my generation? What kind of rubbish is this? Who says you are special like that? They are waiting for you. To, sorry, eh? Sorry. They are waiting for you before they can start church. They are waiting for you before they can allow the presence of God to, to come in the beauty. For you? Are you serious? The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar for you. The devil is a, is a very big liar. In Dutch we say, Heisen Lokon. And that is Velva. The devil is encroached alone on a manipulator. A lot of you, the reason why you don't feel God and you will not have God and you will miss him. You have gotten love to the power that the name of God brings in your life. I have noticed the name of God brings power in your life. It brings authority. 
it brings a command. It brings men wanting to save you. But the rule is not for you to take the privilege and the honor. For you is to be humble and save God in spirit and in truth. I know that saving God brings so many blessings, brings so many rewards, even here on the earth. But it's not to take them. What was it about? It was about saving God in spirit and in truth. And not with manipulation, not with lies, not with all of these things that we are doing. Disgrace and shame to the name of Jesus Christ that you are bringing. They are saving you like you are God. They find it unbelievable. Maybe they think I'm not qualified enough. They want to carry my bag. I say no. I can carry my bag. They do that for presidents because it's their job. Sakam job. Moving around with security guards. Private jets. Who said? The question comes back again. Who said that the body, the body of Christ is special? Tell me about it. I want to hear it. Who said you are special as a pastor, as an apostle, evangelist? Who said you are extra special? Who says you shall sit at, at the high table? There will be high table and low table. In the house of God, there is high table and low table. Leaders live the normal life. They had jobs. They carried their own bag. They did their own things. Pastors, you are using the name of God. You come in church after everybody has already started. And then when you enter with your fake rubbish, the first thing you do is go to your seat, kneel down, and start thanking the Lord. That pride is rubbish. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. You spirit of succubus, pride. You are liars. There's no humility. You are full of yourself. You're full of shit. And then I asked myself, Sister Sharon, I said, you already want to be treated VIP. What's the use of you coming in the, in the place and kneeling down? Who are you kneeling down for? Who are you kneeling down for? God has rejected you. Me, the Lord makes me go to a program, start the program with the people. Even when you saw me in Germany, I didn't praise. I did not stop the show because it's the work of God. It's not about you. You see, you see them, then they go on the chair, they kneel down and start praying. I said, look at fools. When they have made themselves believe that Jesus is in them, but the Lord don't even see them. Mumu. You be big mumus. Big mumu generation, this one. This generation is a disgrace to Jesus. This generation is a disgrace to Jesus, my sister Sharon. It's a disgrace to the name of God. It's foolish, very foolish. You should see how they think they are all that. They enter and then they sit down, and then they tell the whole church, stand up as we welcome the servant of God, our mama and papa. None of you will ever be my mama and papa. Even when I'm in your church, now you are idioting yourself and your fellow followers, your gullible fellow followers. Me, I know who I am in Christ. You can't mumu me. You are a liar, David. You are a liar. You are a liar. And woman to woman, if you are a servant woman, Sharon and me, when we met each other, do you know how we save? We are cooking together. We are washing dishes together. We are doing everything together. Even when we go to church, we go together. Sister Janet, these children that I met, the younger men, the boys, the younger men, I don't have a problem with them because they were not going to join us in the kitchen. But I've also seen younger men who have got special grace and wisdom that know what time it is. They join the women in the kitchen to, to do things. You are not incapacitated that you cannot help out in the kitchen. Come on now, God give you two hands. Sister Sharon, I found, it, I found it so profound that me who was sent by God as an apostle to go to that revival was doing the work of God even deeper, helping my sister. That woman organized the show. 
But the people that came, half of them, pride in full of their selves. The woman was, who organized the show was saving people like they are gods. They were tiring her. And me, I was one of them. The Lord said, do not let this woman suffer an inch. Her body, mind, soul, and spirit. Save in spirit and in truth with humility. So I was at her house. She was cooking food for all the artists and all the people that are so-called leaders. There were three men there and there was one woman. I was embarrassed to see a woman at that age, that sister. If you watch this video, God bless you. The sister was seated in the kitchen, in the living room amongst men. While her own sister who invited her to the program is cooking like a slave in the kitchen. You cannot stand up and smell the juice that you need to help. What kind of women are raising the women of my generation? She was saved and she ate and lived. No help. That's why if you are going to invite people to the programs that God is telling you, remember to know which one God sent. Because Satan is sending other people. That's why you are laboring in vain. Saving people that, first of all, grace, they are under you. They do not even have that amount of grace in the presence of the Lord. It's not that God don't love them, but God actually sees you more truthful and humble. Two, they do not even have anointing like the way you carry. Three, they are not even your caliber of spiritual people that you should be around. And you are there laboring in vain. God is not going to bless you to save people who have pride. God loves humility and humbleness. Some of you women are ashamed. If you are a woman leader like me, why do you want the church members who are fellow women like you to treat you like you are a God? Me, I'm humbled and privileged that when I serve with fellow women, oh, we are comfortable. You are a woman like me, I'm a woman like you. We share so much that what man will never understand. So why would I make Sharon lab, uh, become a slave for me? No. I serve God with Sharon like nobody's business. When I went to UK, they do apostles. Sister Sharon, did we sleep on the same bed? Didn't we? We slept on the same bed. We went to UK. There was no nothing at apostle needs her own room. I thought Sharon, I said we are women. We slept on the same bed. Idris knows I'm a woman, apostle or not. I got naked. Went in the bathroom to bath. I was dressing up right there, feeling free like nobody's business. There's nothing like Sharon was beneath me. And Sharon did not have to carry my bag. Carry my bag where? Now me who carry Sharon's bag by age, Sharon is older than me. By wisdom, grace and experience, Sharon has lived longer than me. Are they be good or what? Pastors, leaders in the church, the Lord is asking again. Who said that we have special treatment and that we make our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ start saving us like slaves? Where did that doctrine come from? When did it start? Why you are the people who are supposed to be in church first before the church members? You are coming in church, they let you in. They give you a special place to sit. They will come you with special treatment. They show you all this ra 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 You're showing off. Pride. Right. My brothers and sisters. It's time to repent and it's time to start saving God in spirit and in truth. Because the fact that we are so much prideful and we love things that are flesh, the people we are saving the gospel to, they do not want God. They want also to be having a standard like we have. I don't want the standard of the papas. If you invite me anywhere or you meet me anywhere, no carrying back for me, no kneeling down for me, no treating me extra special. I don't eat food that is different from the others. I'm the same as all of you. If you're a born again believer like me, then you and me are the same. The blood in your vein and the blood in my vein is the same. It is the precious blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus Christ who died for both you and me. Let me pick up my son. I'll see you people later on. I'm going to praise in my house because you see the weather. I couldn't go outside. So I'll praise inside the house. Pride has to leave the house of the Lord. Stop using the name of the Lord to manipulate others. God called you when he chose you. He expected you to be humble, to, to lead and, and, and lead with love, humility and truth. Not starting to make your friends slaves to saving you like nobody's business. The church is looking like a business area now. Every time you walk in the, in the room and then you go and sit on your chairs and kneel down after you came in late, you're just showing off your pride, your rubbishness. God is not like that. And God will not make people, the web artists and musicians in the world want to charge money, direct cash, give me 10,000 this and that. God knows that some of these organizers who are organizing shows for you people, my brothers and sisters, they do not even have the money. 
so God will not send me somewhere. Where God sends me, even where there is money, I do not expect. Where God tells me, then you can ask. I ask, and I've been taught twice to tell somebody, give me money, because that person is somebody from UK. They thought they mumuted me, but Jesus saw them, and now they watch me here. They see the glory of the Lord. They were supposed to pay me rightfully. They did not pay me anything, and they thought that I would not save. My sister, I saved. Ask Sharon. I saved at the concert, and I went to church the next morning. For You know what? For the name of Jesus. Hi, Skacha. Who was it? Please. Let's go. I saved. Wait, I'm on live. Let me close. I saved my sisters. There was nothing like, oh, give me this. And even when the Lord told me this woman was supposed to pay you, these people were supposed to pay you, I then told them, they knew it, I gave them the finances, but they kept it, they withheld it. They will get their wrath and their punishment for their greediness and crookness. For you, I will bless you. Carry the go. That's how I went. My brothers and sisters, some of you, you are making shows, you are inviting people who are charging you 4,000, 5,000, yet you are just living a lifestyle above your means. You are borrowing, you are crediting, you are suffering and stressing your life to get to give money to somebody else. When the Lord said it is not supposed to be like that, God will not tell me to tell Sharon to give me 10,000 euros because God knows that Sharon does not have 10,000 euros because God can see the account of Sharon. Who is sending you people that are charging you and expecting you to give them money that you yourself do not even have? I need you to ask organizers of programs for the things of God. Ask yourself that. Because if God sends me to you and you can't afford to pay any money, he's going to give you money for a hotel room or transport. And if you don't have hotel room and transport, he's also going to tell you to tell me. Because he's a faithful God. And servants of God, we got to save not because of the money we'll get. We got to save because we are there for what God has told us to save. So it is not the money that gets us excited. It is the assignment, the mission that fulfills the purpose of God for the kingdom of of God to come on the earth and for others to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit for this generation to be transformed and for the power of God to come down. Period. May God bless all of you, my brothers and sisters. I'll see you people later on. Let me bring my child home because it's raining a little bit. I love all of you and it's not about so seed and tithe. A lot of men of God, the Lord has exposed you, women and men. You are living above your means. That's the reason why you have to act prideful like that. But if people knew that you are acting with pride and their money is what is feeding you, these people, some of them will cry. Anyway, let me carry the go. Bye-bye.